One of the most popular sectors of the classic car scene in the UK is Fords. Escorts, Capris, Cortinas, we all love a blue oval. And even if you're not a Ford person, like me, despite what the t-shirt says, I'm not really a Ford guy, I've never had one, my parents never had one, anything like that. There are still certain models that really do it for you. Those ones that still, you look at them and go, yeah, I could fancy one of those one day. But none more for me than this, our new Mark III Ford Cortina. The early 70s for me are one of the best eras of classic Fords because much like the Mark 1 and Mark 2 Escort, for me the Mark 3 Cortina looks like a baby muscle car, that massive front grille, those big lights, these fins on the edges of the wings, it's still a gorgeous looking car and this one is our new Classics Monthly Project car. But you might notice just here, this particular Mark III Cortina is a little bit different because I've come all the way to Car Cave in Scotland to pick up this South African import Mark III Cortina. So let's have a quick walk around our new project car and find out whether actually my 500 mile journey up here was worth making. So straight away, red, kind of an unusual color for a Mark III Cortina, but I think it's gorgeous. It has a nice polish and under the lighting here, it looks really, really smart without looking overly restored. There is a little mark here on the bonnet which looks to be a stone chip or something's landed on it or something. It's not terrible and to be honest we could probably touch that in. Moving down here because it's a South African car the chrome is again really good. There's no stone chips, it's not pitted, the number plate carrier still in good condition. That's going on someone's garage wall, that looks fantastic. But again it's all in really good nick, that big old plastic grille. Those screws you'll probably find will actually come off whereas the equivalent British car they'd be rusted in there you'd have to drill them out or something. That's another good benefit of buying a car of this age from a warm, dry climate. And that is only exacerbated when you look at the body. I mean, yeah, it's not perfect. There's a couple of tiny little dings here, which I don't think the camera will even be able to pick up. But on the whole, this is really, really clean. It's straight as an arrow down there. This arch is still made of metal, which is an alien concept to anyone used to old Fords. This sill is still made of metal. This is on the whole a really solid example. We haven't got to spend hours and hours and thousands of pounds welding this thing up. It's shod in four brand new Toyo tires, perfect because the ones that were on it were a bit ancient to be honest. And it's got some beautiful but unrestored Ross style wheels. Again, they look really, really nice. What we were after here is an honest example of a Mark III Cortina that that you wouldn't be scared to use because we were just talking before we started filming you don't want a 20 grand concourse car because then you're going to be scared to use it this it wasn't 20 grand it's not concourse but on the other hand we will have no qualms about driving it back to peterborough when we're finished filming one of the reasons why cortinas often don't survive in very good nick is because remember back in the 70s these weren't classics to preserve for the future they were just people's cars but this one appears to have had one very caring owner back in south africa that door trim absolutely unmarked still got all the original chrome door handle and window winder that looks lovely tiny bit of bolster wear there on the seat but frankly this is a nigh on 50 year old car find me an unrestored 50 year old car with mint seats and i'll show you someone who's lying jump in oh 70s smell that's fantastic we're talking about a car with 113,000 kilometers on the clock which is off the top of my head about 70,000, we'll put it on screen exactly what it is, and it feels it to be honest. The steering wheel absolutely unmarked, all the switch gear still feels good. Even the headliner is really, really immaculate. It doesn't smell of stale smoke in here. No one's sat in here with massive hair or a hat on and dented it. All the trim is really, really nice. Under the bonnet, no Essex V6 or even a two litre Pinto. What we've got is the old faithful 1600 cross flow engine, and this one, looks to be in really, really good nick. You can probably see there, no obvious signs of any oil leaks, not even down all the manifolds there. It's just been serviced, so it's gonna be good for many, many more miles, or in this case, kilometers. Original Ford radiator cap, that's where your money goes. And again, actually in the engine bay, is solid. The strut tops are all good. There's no rot on the inner wings. Genuinely, this really is a solid car. And even things like the original Motocraft sticker there, the original Ford plate, that's still legible and in good nick. And then we come to the back. Now, again, this isn't a very high spec car. And this was in the days where the world knew that you didn't have a high spec car, the Cortina L, big old L. But this is perfect because those of you who've been watching Classics World for a long time will know that we've just got rid of a Mark III Escort L. So it's perfect, we've got another L Classic Ford in the stable. Big old chrome tailpipe, that looks great. Even the rear valance look, no rust, no rot, no dings or dents, that South African plate there again. 
All the chrome Ford badging is original and looks really, really clean. So overall then, I think we've bought a good one. This isn't like the Bentley where we've had to walk around and point out everything that's broken, missing or wrong with it. I'm just going around and pointing out everything that's right with it. And with a Mark III Cortina, you really can't go wrong. Even with a 1600 fairly base spec car, I'm already loving it. In my head, I am Gene Hunt. So let's take it for a quick spin and find out if it drives like it looks. Right then, let's take the old girl for a spin. Oh. It starts genuinely first time. That's awesome. Just turning it around in the car park here, the gear change, really nice. Really direct, really precise. It feels good. There's a lot of cars this age, you change gear and it's just like stirring some cold porridge. It's really unpleasant. But this slots into gear really nicely. Turning circle is really impressive, actually. This is back in the day when family cars were big rear wheel drive saloons, which means of course you can get more lock on. So it turns around really easily. That little 1600 engine, let's give it some gas. Do you know what? It goes all right. It's only a little 1600 cross flow. It's not the big three liter, but that actually goes all right. Going over the bumps here, no rattles, no squeaks. I haven't left the rear bumper on the road behind me, so that's obviously attached well. It actually feels really solid for any 50-year-old car, leave alone one that's had a pretty much unknown life in South Africa. So was it worth driving all the way up to Edinburgh to pick up this South African Mark III Cortina? Absolutely it was. It's clean, it looks the part, it's pretty much rust-free, it drives superbly. So to follow the adventures of this beautiful Mark III Cortina, stay tuned for future videos of course, but most importantly, follow Classics Monthly magazine where you'll see more adventures and more improvements to our new South African beast. You know what? I think I might be converted. <laughs>